I love my Unified Dream Machine SE, but there are certain limitations that we will address in this video with an NVR. So I've had a Unify Dream Machine Pro for a long time, and then I upgraded to a Unify Dream Machine SE, which I did a whole upgrade video on right there. And it's gone a bit mad. Yeah, I can't stop putting new things on my network. Um, and it's got to a point now where I have, well, let's take a look, shall we? Let's go to my network controller here. And let's have a look at the devices that are on this uh, particular UDM Pro. Yeah, so you can see there are, there's the UDM SE, not Pro, sorry, the UDM SE. Uh, there's five switches. There are 15 uh, access points where one's offline now, the gate, maybe because it doesn't have power, it's solar, which I also did a video on there. Um, and then I have 13 cameras and floodlights. Yeah. Um, and then I have the obviously the unified access for the office that I uh, am in to get in here, the lock, the, the card lock, which I also did a video on, video on there. I know, videos everywhere. But the problem or the, not the problem, but I want to add more things to this. I want to add more access points because the farm's large. Um, I want to upgrade some of the cameras, possibly the 4K. And all of this take processing power. And just how much? Well, there's a very neat tool here, the Unify uh, OS Console Resource Calculator. So I'm going to choose my UDM SE. I'm going to say I have 15 access points because I do. Uh, I'm using Protect, and you can see the CPU load is going up and up and up, as is the memory usage. I have 10, I think it's 10, let's just have a look. If I go to Protect, and let's have a look at the devices. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 cameras and a 4K camera, so 12 cameras. So 11 HD and one 4K. Then I have Unify Access with a door. Oh, there we go. Now, that's already using about half of the CPU power. However, if I go, so half the memory and some of the CPU, if I go into the actual device and I go back to the, uh, there we go, click there. And I can see, uh, oh, they just changed it. This is version 3. It's the new version of the OS, so I still haven't quite figured out where everything is. Is this storage? No. That's, we're going to address that too. You see the storage is used all the way up. About this console. There we go. You can see that it's using 3 gigs of the 4 of memory. And the CPU load is 30% right now. Okay, not too bad. But if I go and I add, say another just four 4K cameras, it just starts going up and up and up. Now I don't want this, or oh, and actually if I add another three access points as well, which I have, yeah, it just keeps going up. Now it might be able to handle it, okay, but I also want to be able to have backup of my video. And for that reason, I have got an NVR, a network video recorder, so take the load off the Unify, uh, Unify Dream Machine SE, <sighs> so that all of the video load goes to that rather than on the dream machine um that's the thought that's the plan and um yeah you're going to come on the journey on how to install it and um, somehow migrate these cameras to the network video core of the nvr yeah but uh first let's have a look at the actual unit the nvr so here's the box this is quite large um i just did a, a video on the poe 24 switch and that was like this big. So this is a big box. It's a full size thing. But um, this is how it comes, the NVR. It's very industrious. Industrious, industrial, industrial. All right, let's have a look what's in the actual box. Look at that. <laughs> so always neatly packaged as anything unified. It all looks more or less the same, which makes sense. So first we have all the gubbins for actually installing it. So there's the power cord. I'll need an adapter because it's a US power port, power port. 
And then we have a quick start guide, which is here. You can scan it, it's just a card, it doesn't do anything. And then we have all of the screws for mounting it. So I'm just gonna be using those four and those four and these two brackets for rounding it in the rack, mounting it, rounding it in the Mac, mounting it in the rack, which is behind me. Um, put it there. Okay, let's get this beast out. It's so nicely packaged, as it should be. Um, so this is the NVR, not the Pro, there's an NVR Pro as well. Um, the NVR Pro is too din, uh, too din. It's not a radio for a car. It's two IUs, <laughs> um, where this is just one. So let's just get it up. The front of it here has just four trays. So these are four hard, hard drive trays. One, two, three, four. So you put one or more hard drives in it. There's bay one, two, three, four. Uh, I just have one hard drive to start with because hard drives are not cheap. Uh, you put the brackets on there. And then on the back, we have fans. So even though the last video I <laughs> put in a fanless switch, um, this one does have fans, so hopefully it's not as loud, but we'll see. Um, this is where we link it. We connect it either with a uh, one gigabit IG45 Cat6, or you can use SFP, which is that one there, which is one or 10 gig uh, gigabit. I don't have an SFP cable right now, so I'm gonna be using RJ45 to start with. Um, and this bit here is for the uh, USB connect which is a power management system, which I don't have yet, so I'm not going to be using that port. Um, that's all there is to it. It's reasonably heavy, even without the hard drives in it. Oops, box. I think we're going to install it in the rack and then put a hard drive in it and then try and adopt it and see what happens. Yeah. So I've just added these brackets on the sides because uh, that's boring to look at. And I'm going to slide it in underneath my uh, switch that's right here like this. But first, I just gotta mount the brackets and clip in a few cord cables, etc. cetera. And um, yeah, then we'll turn it on. Stay tuned. Whee! attach this to port 24 from the patch panel to the switch as well because that's without PoE and I don't need PoE and this is sort of a different it's like a proper piece of hardware kind of thing so my logic says that it should be over on this side not with all the other devices that are less significant I'm sure that makes sense So my hand doesn't actually fit up there, so that was fun. But I got it in the back of the 24, so that's now connected to the NVR. So then we get the patch cable, which is here, itty bitty patch cable. Put that in 24 and 24. Oh, sh Okay, patch cable's in now. That was fun. My hand didn't actually fit. Anyway, power cable, I found an adapter for it. I'm gonna change this cable over. Um, but I've just realized that I should have put this in beforehand because it doesn't actually, I can't get it up behind it because that bit that sits inside the NVR is too long to actually fit, so. Okay, um, it's a couple hours later because <laughs> um, the PowerPoint didn't fit as in it really didn't fit. So I had to get this 90 degree right angle kettle plug instead to plug in and not have it go out the back from there. Yeah, um, so um, there's not that much room in the cabinet and it's a big unit, the NVR. So let's try again. Um, so instead this time, as you can see here, it's gonna come in like that. Oh, actually the other way, like this. So I'm hoping that is enough room in the back of the cabinet. <clears throat> Let's find out. Okay, I'll install it 
again. All right, now it's in. Let's see if it um, will work. Yeah, or if I messed something else up. Anyway, let's, I'll turn it on and then we'll jump into the controller or protect. I'm not entirely sure which, where it goes, where to adopt it, but we're about to find out. Hmm. All right, let's see where it shows up. Um, it's plugged in, it's starting up. Hopefully it'll be here any moment now. All right, we're going to try and um, look and protect. I think that's where it's supposed to show up, but let's see. Oh, there's llamas. Look, llamas on the camera. That, I guess. Open that. What does that do? Ah. Okay, different setup experience. Sure, let's go through that. Console name. All right, we're going to call this Merlewood UNVR. Unified Network Video Recorder. Sure. Next. No backup. No, I hope there's no backups. I didn't make any backups because I didn't have one before. Update schedule. Daily at 3 a.m.? Sure. That's probably good. Basic configuration for your console. Send time. Yep, yeah, basic is good. Okay, finished. So that was pretty painless. Let's see if that works. Setting up your console. Do, 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 do. Oh, so we can log into that directly. Interesting. I didn't ex actually expect that, but there we go. All right, so we are in now in the UNVR. Okay, I guess it'll update and then we'll try and get the cameras across from the Dream Machine SE to this, I think. All right, so we have now updated it, I guess. Um, mine says protect is getting ready. Okay. Oh, I can click on that. Let's try that. No, no, we gotta wait for, oh, here we go, protect up to date. So this shows up with Unify OS, so it sort of looks like the UDM SE, the Dream Machine SE. It's sort of similar, but it only has got one application. So I'm going to click on Protect, I guess, and see. Aha, so there's nothing in here. Well, I can see I've got eight gigs of, or eight terabytes of storage there, so that's correct. So it's found the hard drive. So now I need to get the cameras over here. How do I get them over there? Let's just try and go to the network thing and see if it shows up on the devices. Now, I should preface this with saying I haven't actually read the quick start guide or anything either. So I went in blind on purpose to see if I could figure it out. Um, oh, the Unify NVR is there. It's online, it's wired. So it's under protect. Okay, that's cool. So what have we got here? We can view it in protect and it's hooked up to port 24 as we plugged it in. That's fantastic. Um, insights settings. We'll give it a fixed IP or not. Okay. S could start your, installing your first protect device. So set of instructions. Uh, right. Well, that didn't work. Or, oh, there we go. Oh, hang on. Well, that's not helpful. Okay, let's see if we can add cameras. All right. Aha. So we don't have any un... We have all these that are unmanaged, it says. Okay. Can I then just go and pinch them? It says managed by another console. Okay. I'm going to just try with this one. I don't know which one it is. G3 Flex. It could be any of them. There's a few. Let's try and adopt it. The device password. I don't know. Has it a guess here? Okay, so I'm not sure how I set the password. If you know how to set the password for a camera, let me know in the comments. It's not immediately obvious to me. I may have to do that through the console, like the command line. I'd imagine for this case, I'm just gonna unmanage the camera for the carport. I'm gonna keep the camera's recording history. We're gonna unmanage. And let's see if it shows up on the other side. There we go. 
So then it shows up. So I can click to adopt that into here. Okay, so it's now adopting it into the UNVR. So unless you have a password for the camera, which that eludes me. Okay, no, that that's the one I just had. Okay. All right, so now I can give that a name. I'm going to call this carport because that's where it came from. All right, so I'm moving them across now. And I'm going to apply those changes. It said updating it. Right, there's an update for it. Interesting. So it must be updating it to work with the UNVR. So a different firmware for the UDM, UDMSC to the UNVR. That's, I didn't expect that. Well, I guess I can go and unmanage them all. And then we'll see if they show up in Protect somehow. Ah, so that shows up down here. Now that's managed by another console. So they're going to have to be a bit of a, there's a bit of a fight here. But that, I guess that makes sense because there's a hard drive in the UDMSE. There's a hard drive in the UNVR. It'll have to go on the hard drive in the console that's managing it. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to unmanage the cameras because I don't have the password for the cameras. I've never set a password for a camera. So maybe I could do that somehow, but yeah, let me know in the comments how that would work. But for now, we're going to unmanage them, and I'll be back in a second. All right, so now I've unmanaged them all from the UDM SE, and I've adopted them into the UNVR. So, so far, so good. Um, as you can see, I can go and I can see, you know, they're the same name as before. I chose the same names. And they all work. We can go and have a look here at Llama Cam 3, I think it is. Um, and Llama Cam 1. Might even be a llama. Who knows? You ready? Here we go. Hello. That's live. He's right up there. Right up there. Having a bit of a chew. Mm, I know. Llamas. Um, anyway, sidetrack. Um, now the question is, do I have to go into the UNVR to see all the cameras? I believe I do, because... If I go back to the UDMSE, this is the IP for the UDMSE. That's where it would have the Protect app. And it doesn't have any devices right now. It can see them all, and it says they're managed by another console, just like the UNVR said before. But I will have to go into the UNVR to see the cameras. Um, so if I go into here, playback, well, there isn't anything. There's nothing yet. Well, there's one camera left, the gate camera, which I'll adopt later, because... Um, it's not online right now. Um, there's not enough sun, I think, um, and the battery's a bit wonky. Different story. Um, but there's nothing here, right? There's there's no devices. So if I go to, uh, I think, the network here in the UDMSE, and then I go to the devices, like this. Yeah, see, they're still all online. That's fine. The Unify NVR, which should have another name. Let's give it a name. Update device name in Protect Application. Oh, okay, so I can't update the name here. Anyway, um, I can go to that view in Protect. And then that, ah, that just goes to the Protect side of things. Right. Oh, here's the gate camera when it was active. Um, Right, so it doesn't actually go to the right protect application. How interesting. Um, it's, yeah, I can't view it in protect, not its protect. So I have to go into the UNVR. Right, and here's the llamas again. Okay, so let's see, um, how does it work in the mobile app? Because I use that a lot when I'm out about. Obviously, that's when you want to check your cameras. Usually, it's when you're not home. Um, if there's a uh, detection of movement or whatever. So as you can see on the phone here, I've got it here. Uh, yeah, there's no cameras on the UDMSE as we expected, but I can change the top bit here and I'm going to just choose Merwood UNVR, which is the one we just set up, and all the cameras are there. So that's super easy. That also means I could add another UNVR or I could add cameras to the Dream Machine or whatever and I could just switch between the devices here. So that's super easy, so that's no hassle at all. That works, that's very good and it's just as quick as before. It's not quicker actually, because it's a dedicated machine now. 
yeah, so that works really well. Um, and then just, hmm, the last thing that I might want to check is how does it work from the console remotely, like the web page? Yeah, the lights are on again. I know, I forgot before. Anyway, this is the web portal. Uh, this is unify.ui.com. Uh, which is where you log into your account for Unify. And I now have two devices rather than one. Before I just had the UDMSE, now I also have the UNVR. And that makes sense because they each have their own Protect app. So they each have their own set of cameras. Now I've moved all the cameras to the NVR, but I could, in theory, add more cameras to the uh, UDM or I can add more to the NVR. So they would each have their own Protect app and I would have to log in differently. That's just how that works. And it kind of makes sense because um, the UNVR has now also updated to version 3 of the Unify OS, just like the SE has. So they're each running their own. Uh, they talk to each other. They know that they're on the same network. They're on the same account, which is my account. But they are individual things, and you can log into each individually, just so, like I showed you on the mobile app. So let's have a look at what else is in the UNVR now that we're here. So I could install uh, Unify ID. This is like their uh, single sign-on kind of solution, um, which I haven't used. I believe it's only really available in North America or in the US, uh, but again, I don't know too much about it. But we have, so applications, it just runs Protect for now, and probably will for quite some time. I don't have any plans on changing that. Uh, you can look at the devices. So this is where we adopted everything into. You can see um, there's any you know, admins, that's just me at the moment. Console settings. So this is what you'd expect from a Unify OS device, such as a Dream Machine or, in this case, the NVR. So it has backup config. It has location. Uh, it has the control controls. So, for example, um, one of the upgrades I need is I need to have... I need to have a UPS for this particular server cabinet because the only UPS I have so far is at the house where the other server cabinet is. And I don't think the NVR particularly likes brownouts, you know, quick on and offs. Um, so I'm going to definitely get a UPS. And if, then if, if power fails, I can turn it off, which would be in here. And that's really important. You want to be able to turn off things nicely. So that would be uh, turning off this and then turning off the, the Dream Machine. And you can factory reset, etc. And it has some um, networking properties. Uh, push notification settings. This is like the Unify Dream Machine as well. The SE. Everything you can put on and off. You can have notifications. That's for your mobile device or emails. Um, if you prefer that. There's a mapping feature. I haven't played with this yet. It's just come out in version 3 of the OS. Unify OS. But you can actually upload your floor plan from say the, um, the Unify... Um, What's it called again? I made a video on it, which is right there. But that thing, the uh, design center, that's it. Um, and you can actually move your cameras around there and get a heat map and the coverage map of where they cover. That's quite neat, so I might play with that later. And then there's a system log, which is a new thing that's really much more in detail, apparently, for version 3 of the OS, so that's really nice. And then you can check the storage, how much storage we've got. And this is kind of neat. You can see I'm just using one bay at the moment. I can click on that bay, I think. No, I can't. Um, oh, here we go. We can click. Okay, that's all it does. But I could check what hard drives are in what. And I can, if I get more hard drives in here, I can then set up RAID solutions. So I can have backups or I can have, you know, split the data across two disks or whatever I want to do. I'm not entirely sure which RAID um, versions or which types of RAID that it supports. But I can, uh, you can use RAID. Um, and you can see here, um, you know, RPMs, etc. Temperature, yada, yada, yada and needs attention. You currently don't have enough drives installed to protect your storage with a RAID configuration. Yeah, so I need more drives and I will get that later on. But you know, every drive is three, four hundred dollars Australian. So I'll just buy one at a time when the budget allows, like most people. Um, and you can see utilization. It's only been running for a short while, so it's only used 300 gig only <laughs> um, out of the eight terabytes. Redundancy level, well, I only have one disk. I can do half of disks, okay? So you can you can actually set up redundancy and, and store things twice, but I'd rather do that on multiple drives. There's no point doing it on one disk, I don't think. Hmm. Hot spare, what's that? Enabling hot spare will decrease the number of available drives by one. If a disk fails, the hot spare will order. Ah, that's nice. So you could set up, say, a RAID with two 
uh, drives, so for either for backup, mirroring it, or go across them, you know, half dialed each, and then have a backup drive that just sits there idling. So if one of them fails, it poof, automatically swaps over to that. That's kind of neat. And of course, I can, I can reformat it. Um, so I can set this as the hot spare, essentially. But yeah, we can have four drives under storage. It's kind of neat. And then about the console, is all the, the details of it. And you can see here, it actually has four gigabytes of memory as well. Um, and it has four gigabytes or five, 4.755 five? Mm. Um, gigabytes of internal storage. Now you can't access that storage. It's only four or five gig, not much for cameras. Uh, but I believe that's where it stores all the settings and everything for the for the device itself. Uh, makes sense. The, the UDMSE has internal storage as well. So that's what you get. That is the Unify NVR. Actually quite simple to set up once I got my head around that it was a separate device, not an actual like you don't adopt it into Protect. You set it up as a new separate Unify OS device and then have Protect on that. So that kind of makes sense now. Not hard to do. Um, it seems to work really well. It works remotely via the mobile app or in this case, as you can see, I'm on the website now. I'm not even running locally. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Anything I missed, anything you want to know, let me know how that pass with the, with the cameras work. Um, anything else that I missed that might have made this journey easier. And as always, if you like the content, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you on my journey of doing many things with networking and home assistant, uh, net auto, home automation with home assistant lego whatever else technology i can come up with um, but thanks for now and i'll see you in the next video